We start part two with a return to football and coaching to be precise. Last week, English FA coach educator Tony Ricketts was on the rock administering yet another level two coaching course. I caught up with Tony as he put a dozen or so of the Rock's coaches through their paces on pitch two at the stadium on what appears to be the only piece of the Bayside complex not affected by the Gibraltar Music Festival. I've come to the Rock, obviously. Um, I've, I've become familiar and friendly with David Wilson, who uh, works for the national team uh, on a level two down in Plymouth. And um, the um, FA were looking for somebody to come over and do a course for them. Um, so Davey Wilson put my name forward and here I am and on day six of a FA Level 2. Yeah. What does the uh, Level 2 entail? It's a two-part week of uh, hard training here and uh, lots of classroom work as well, I understand. Yeah, it's a 10-day uh, programme of um, study. Um, most of it practical-based, but there's a theory side to it as well, so we give them some uh, in-depth knowledge about nutrition and football fitness and different coaching styles that's more or less around the theory and then obviously the practical today you've, you've seen the guys doing uh, part of their assessment which is task eight ar around a small side of game so they get a 15 minute period to put on a session around a topic that I actually give them um, off, a, off a structured technical syllabus. This first part has been all outdoors and like you said there's plenty of it. coaching has really come on leaps and bounds across the world it's really you have to have it nowadays it's not just some bloke with a clipboard. No, it's, um, you know, there's there's a structure to throughout it all. You know, UEFA and FIFA, the governing bodies of, of world football and European football, have made sure that every 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 country has now got this in place. And with the Gibraltar FA now being part of UEFA, it's a, it's a massive learning curve for not only the, the, the Gibraltar FA, but also for, for the young coaches. Um, and, you know... You know, there'll be a girls' program, a, a boys' program, a futsal program, as which is your, you know, it's all already in place on the on the on the rock. What uh, have you made of the group that you had? Have you seen them progress across the course of the six days? Yeah, obviously, the what what's gone on in the six days, it it, it always is a tremendous uh, learning curve. You know, these guys have never never been coached before, probably. Uh, the majority haven't. Some have played, some have not played, some have got involved because, you know, their kids are involved. So the, the, the learning journey in terms of them as coaches has been fantastic. Them as players, it's improved them. And I can also see now, as a group, they've gelled and they work together and work hard for each other. And it's, it's quite exciting to watch. It's very important, though, that they do take on the, from the coaching. They don't stagnate and just sort of like uh, think, well, I've got a badge. There really is a constant evolvement of coaching. Yeah, it is. You know, what, what, one of the problems these, these guys are going to have, you know, within their clubs and structures is, is there anybody to help them, you know, give them further knowledge, further experience to, to develop their coaching? You know, because sooner or later these guys are going to have to go UA for B as part of the, the, the governing bodies, um, you know, with professional clubs. They've got to have a UA for B. Um, and so, so that's where they will have the problem. But I know, I know the, the FA are looking at appointing a head of coaching or a technical director, whatever you want to call him, to oversee see that sort of programme to help coaches with their development. Well, you're just here for the six days this time round, uh, coming back uh, to finish the assessments later on in the year, I believe. Yeah, well, we've got, they've got two years to finish it, but we, we hopefully get it done in six months. Um, you know, we'll stick, sit down with the candidates and the Gibraltar FA and decide when's the best time to come back out. I'll come back out for a four-day block. We do two, two support days, and then days nine and ten will be them, their final assessment, which is a 35-minute session, taking it from a technique practice, which is unopposed, into a skill practice, which is opposed, into a small-sided game. And you've seen them put on a small-sided game today. Gibraltar's mixed martial arts scene has grown in recent years, and the club has just returned from a successful trip to Morocco. Richard caught up with Tony Joaquim earlier in the week and found out how the trip had gone and about a surprise install for local MMA fans shortly. Uh, we introduced uh, mixed martial arts in uh, Morocco, Tangiers, Saks, Kabir and Fes. And uh, we organised uh, the first international mixed martial arts uh, competitions between Gibraltar and our colleagues and uh, members from uh, Morocco. Now, uh, you yourself and obviously your club, you have very good and uh, close relations with, with Morocco in, in the sporting world. How did that all come about and, and where is the relationship at the moment? 
Uh, the relationship is 100%. Uh, we've been going uh, for the last seven years promoting Jiu-Jitsu. We started obviously introducing Jiu-Jitsu on, the, on North Africa and uh, we've made a very good job about it. We've got about six uh, different clubs from other regions of Tangiers and that. And we've got a lot of interest from further field as, uh, from Tetuan. Now, obviously, this is a, a big milestone, uh, not only for Gibraltarian MMA, but as you just mentioned, for Moroccan MMA as well in the, the north of Africa. Uh, a massive squad that you took over this time. I think it was uh, uh, one of the biggest uh, squads that uh, has ever travelled abroad for, for martial arts uh, from Gibraltar. Uh, well, from MMA, yes. Uh, in Jiu-Jitsu, we've travelled around uh, Europe and we've taken big teams from kids and others. Uh, this was the actual first time as well. We took about nine fighters, including for the first time ever, one female fighter. Now, obviously, the, the sport is growing. The fact that the ladies are also getting involved in the sport is, is very positive for, for MMA in Gibraltar. It is very positive. Uh, we place our names already in, uh, in the mixed martial arts world. In the, uh, we've only been doing it for three years, and we're doing it by the book, very, very officially. Uh, we've got uh, a good one uh, coming up in a couple of uh, months' time here in Gibraltar. And obviously this is now the, the start of the, the official start of the season, uh, looking ahead it's for the next 12 months, uh, not only MMA but uh, Jiu-Jitsu as well. Uh, busy times for you? Yes, we've only started uh, today and uh, we're only looking forward. Uh, we've, we will be holding the first uh, mixed martial arts, the international one, in cage fighting. So that will be on the 21st of November. And obviously the, the MMA side of your club is, is mainly geared towards or uh, more popular, what should we say, with, with adults, with the more senior athletes. Um, the juniors uh, are more into jiu-jitsu and the, the self-defence. Um, so what, what is in store for the junior kids in your club as well? Uh, we've introduced a youth section for the, for the male and females. Now my aim is we've got now a team from youth. We've got an adult team of males. Now my aim is to do a, an all-female national team in mixed martial arts and I think uh, we'll get there. And uh, one final point, uh, you just mentioned the, the international MMA tournament that you're planning to host here in Gibraltar in the next couple of months. Uh, what can we expect from that? Obviously we've seen MMA in Gibraltar in, for the past couple of years but who can we expect to see coming over to Gibraltar and, and what's, what is the, the crowd in for? For a big surprise. <laughs> They're going to be in for a big surprise. It's, it's a completely different world. Uh, you see it in TV and it's not the same as being there live, seeing it live. Once you close uh, the gate, believe me, as a, a professional referee, it's intimidating. But it's very, very highly skilled, and everybody's got to abide by the same rules. We've got teams in by the, from Spain, the United Kingdom. We've got a big team coming from uh, Morocco as well, and uh, obviously the Gibraltar national team. And obviously, this being the, the official start of the season, it's the perfect time for anybody who wants to get involved to come down and have a chat with you. Yes, by all means. I mean, uh, I'm always here to help everybody, and uh, not just uh, the males, but the, the actual females as well. I do uh, boxing fit uh, classes for ladies only, and uh, it's very popular. Again, we will be starting us from next week, uh, morning sessions, Tuesday and Thursdays, from uh, 10 to 12, and evenings from 5.30 to, to 7 o'clock. So, ladies, wake up. The local pool association are off on their travels again shortly and Richard discussed the trip with GPA president Sean Lombardo as well as looking ahead to the coming season. Well, uh, Sean, the start of the new Gibraltar Pool Association season is uh, fast approaching. Uh, you've got your AGM in a couple of weeks, but uh, what can we expect from the new season? Well, yeah, the AGM starts on, it's on the 25th of September. Uh, the new season, same as uh, last year. I mean, we'll be having all the usual tournaments, the singles championship, the doubles championship, all the rankings that go on every month. And uh, looking forward to the international tournaments coming ahead. Now, as you've just mentioned, uh, a lot of domestic action for those who enjoy uh, singles, doubles. Uh, the team events are obviously always very popular. But uh, for Gibraltar's uh, top pool players, the, the main event is obviously those international events. Uh, and uh, starting off with the island uh, black ball uh, competition uh, in a couple of weeks' time. Yes, that's right, Richard. Um, on the 29th, we'll be travelling to Rosyth in Scotland for the Island Black Ball Association Championships. It's a um, seven-man seven team event. Um, we'll be taking four teams, two men's and two ladies' teams, there to participate. Um, we're one of the founding members of that association. 
So it's, uh, it's a great tournament to start off the season with. And after that comes the big one, the, the World Championships in October. Uh, again, players are already throughout the summer uh, training very hard for that competition. That's correct, yes. The, the World Championships, that's on the 25th of October through to the 1st of November. That's been held in Perth in Scotland again. And yeah, it's, it's the big one that uh, everybody looks forward to. It's held every two years. So we've all been building up for, for this uh, championships. Now before we look further ahead into the season, if I can just ask you these two main major uh, competitions for Gibraltar Pool Association. Uh, in terms of uh, game formats, obviously it's a, a team format, the same as uh, one of the leagues here in Gibraltar, the, the, the team league obviously. Um, in terms of the actual uh, format of the individual games, how does it compare Gibraltar's domestic scene to the international games that you, you will be playing? Well, it uh, varies quite a lot. I mean, on the domestic scene we play a minimum of six players per team. Uh, you play six singles and three doubles, so it's a best of nine. Um, all matches are played because then you've got a frame difference uh, to take into account at the end of the season if there's any ties in the points. Um, on the international scene, uh, say for example on the World Championships, you're playing a uh, minimum of five players per team and you play around Robin, so you've got a best of 25 frames. Um, so it's, it's a more intense single frames, and, um, but it's a hell of a lot more competitive. And uh, moving back to the domestic scene, obviously we've, we've seen your, your lovely new premises uh, a couple of times before now. Um, has this in, in any way uh, attracted new players to the sport? It has attracted new players in the sense of um, old players coming back as well. Um, we've, um, we're hoping to this year build a, upon the, um, our junior squads as well. Um, we had a lot of players before the summer holidays. Unfortunately, as you know, kids, they, summer comes along and all they want is beach. But um, yeah, we, we have attracted a lot of new players and we're hoping to attract a lot more. And you just mentioned the juniors, and we can just touch upon them as well uh, briefly. Uh, there tends to be a group of uh, 10, 20 sort of consistent players who, who come week in, week out. Uh, are there any new newcomers to the junior scene, or is that something that you're trying to, to develop into the future, the, the youth scene of, of Gibraltar Pool? We've had a couple, but yes, we are trying to develop it more, and uh, we hope to target uh, schools and things like that in the, in the next up-and-coming months. Um, to try and get uh, more players in, more under-18s, under-23 players coming into the scene. And one final point, uh, there's still a couple of weeks before the start of the, the new domestic season. Uh, is it still, are still people still in time to, to sign up teams or, or individually for the season? Yes, by all means. I mean, they can, the, the membership is individual member and then you can register for, for a club or a bar with the, with the teams. Um, all they have to do is uh, pop down to the three hours see Val and uh, she'll um, get the players registered, the teams registered. They're still in time. The season doesn't start until probably mid-October, the, the actual domestic league. Uh, we'll be kicking off with the league and then with the Jib Telecom Cup and the um, Jib Oil Plate, uh, the other team <coughs> competition that goes on throughout the domestic league. That's all for this week's programme from the Sportsport team. Thanks for watching and bye for now.